So uh, a big welcome to the UK, Jamie Hayward. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, Jamie, you're a co-founder of Patients Like Me. And I wonder if you could start off just saying a little bit about what it is and why you set it up. So um, my brother Stephen was diagnosed with motor neuron disease when he was 29. And my family and I began a journey to try and figure out how to sort of develop treatments and care for him through this, you know, this devastating illness. And in the process, we really were, uh, we started a nonprofit and we began to uh, do research into the disease. But we were learning a lot from other patients. We were learning about how to care for him, how to, uh, what suggestions for what would make it, the disease have less impact on our lives, you know, ways to travel or, or get up in the morning or eat when you have, you know, you have impairments. And we were frustrated that we kept learning these things on a one-off basis. And, and patients like me sort of came out of the process of uh, some clinical research I was doing and, and actually a, a, a dating site. So I was sort of looking at doing clinical research and at the same time I was looking at online dating where I eventually met my uh, lovely partner who I had two great children with. But it was the coincidence of two events that sort of led us to realize that if you helped patients measure their disease and talk about the things they did to solve problems and you allowed them to connect to each other so that you could share data and, and learn from each other, you'd build a totally new learning model for medicine. And you might be able to actually go back and say whether medicine's doing a good job in a specific case. So we sort of crossed a clinical trial in a dating site. And that's what patients like me really is, is the ability to go and find someone just like you and learn from them. So people uh, enter information, individuals enter about their condition and learn from other groups. How many people have signed up and where are the most active disease areas on your site? So we have about 180,000 patients right now um, and, and they're concentrated in about 12 major conditions that we cover that are sort of deeply, deeply measured. That'd be motor neuron disease, multiple sclerosis, sort of depression and bipolar, as well as some of the pain conditions like fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and, and we, we use the, and as the patients connect, and some of the communities are quite large, we have 30,000 people with MS and 6,000 people with motor neuron disease. So it, it's, it's a very, very rich environment for shared learning. Those are much larger than any clinical trial that's ever been run in those diseases. It's very interesting because we did some work recently with someone uh, called Stefan Lindblatt from Sweden, I don't know if you know him, yeah. who set up the disease registries, sort yeah. of bottom up, which is a kind of co-production between patients and clinicians, where there's a lot of self-entering of information in order uh, for the clinicians to know in real time and the patients what is the impact of certain disease reg drugs reg regimen. It's very, very powerful. So when a new patient enters um, you know, treatment, there's much more granular information about what is the precise regimen that's suitable for them. So has there been any attempt in the US to try to link your information from all these thousands of patients with that kind of issue, that kind of initiative, disease management? So um, we, we did a study where we showed that patients with epilepsy that used our system had better outcomes, they reduced ER admissions, and, uh, and they understood their side effects better and got better care. So we're replicating that now with the VA. So we're integrating that into the VA system. The VA is a lot like the NHS in that case, where it's a, a centralized system to take care of veterans that served in the military. Um, that, that's the beginning of that effort. Um, I think that the Sweden example is really important because mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the cost savings and the improvements in quality that happen in Sweden are just remarkable. I mean, you know, almost doubling of, uh, uh, sorry, having of error rates and, and dramatic improvements in outcomes and, and, and consistency of great care across the, the entire uh, different parts of the Swedish health system, as well as a lowering in cost that comes from doing fewer things you know, that, that don't make sense. What, what I think Patients Like Me offers as a potential, uh, especially in a system as integrated as the NHS, is the ability to marry sort of the best input from the patient and the best input from the physician into sort of a more cost-effective registry model, a way of measuring uh, health and conditions that allow the system to improve and learn where it's best and most effective at much lower cost than sort of the centralized, um, sort of top-down uh, clinician-centered approach that are being used, even though those work, but they're still quite an expensive way of approaching the problem. What's the take up in the UK of patients um, on your site? How many people are entering information? And is there a cultural issue between uh, the propensity of people here to enter information on sites compared to the US? So we have a few, we have a few thousand people in the UK. Um, and our, our site's about 85%, 80% US. Um, and we have obviously people from Canada and the United Kingdom and Australia. Uh, we're in English, so it's, it's uh, English only at the moment. Um, 
I think there are cultural differences uh, and, and some that sort of reinforce the participation in what I'd sort of call a great society initiative, which is the willingness to contribute back and, and not, you know, not just to have the, your responsibility to the system be to take from it, but to give back. And I think it's more, more relevant here. I think there are greater concerns about privacy that need to be addressed and, ch and thought about in this context. And so you know, right now we're in the process of really understanding those local issues. And obviously anything that's integrated in the clinical system needs to operate with the sort of local concerns for privacy and, and, and the way the local citizens operate. But we find that the people here have the same problems. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you need to talk to someone who's been through what you've been through. And, you know, and, and you have to give up a little privacy to do that. You, know, you have to say, you know, you can't find someone that, that's had your problem without sort of sharing something about yourself. I think that's actually an old tradition here uh, and, and, and one that, um, that if we enable it with technology in a safe and effective way can allow us to, to allow people to bring the best of their own experience back to help the NHS deliver better care. And what is the interaction in the US of the physician community and the nursing community with your site and the information on your site? Are people using it when in interactions, for example? So interestingly, you know, I think physicians um, have often hypothetically been concerned about the kinds of tools that we provide, like internet-based ways of measuring data or understanding that. And there are, there are a lot of legitimate um, critiques that one can raise about this that have to do with bias. But all research methods have a lot of biases and issues. And what, what we found is that once the system is running in a condition and we really know how to measure something, the physicians and the nurses learn things from our system and they use that to teach patients and that creates a great deal of confidence. So it's not that this is necessarily replacing other evidence sources, but it's supplementing them. It's saying in the real world, what really happens with people that we see and care for and what can they teach us? And you know, as that's happened, we really have found no one that doesn't find that to some degree valuable. And what's your, um, what would you like to see in the future? How do you see this site developing and maybe interacting with other systems and people and stakeholders? Well, you know, I'm, I'm more of a discovery person than I am someone that's involved in medical care. I mean, what I really care about is helping to find the right treatments for disease and make them actually work. And the elements that make discovery happen are when you have strong populations of high quality data that are ready and willing to participate in the, you know, the process of doing biobanks and finding out what's wrong and answering questions quickly with researchers. I think that, that there is an opportunity with the NHS and the United Kingdom to combine the best of those volunteers that really want to lead uh, a new understanding of their disease and become partners with the researchers and, and even the, the companies, the pharmaceutical companies that want to help develop treatments for their diseases to accelerate that cycle. So, so my sense, I'm very helpful that integrating this with the NHS care model and the patients together will produce a better care uh, measurement tool for the NHS, but most importantly, an acceleration of the life sciences industry that actually develops treatments that extend life and make people's lives better. And are you finding the UK a very conducive uh, set of people to deal with uh, at the level of the authorities as opposed to patients? Well, I, you know, I, I love the, the sort of humility of, uh, of many of the people who work for the NHS who are part of it. I mean, you go to meetings and people talk about all the things that are wrong and how quickly that we have to, to move to improve them in the NHS. Uh, you know, our experience and, you know, by a measurable basis, the NHS is one of the best health systems in the world. And you have very, very strong leaders that are trying to figure out how to advance it and move it in the right way that serves people in the United Kingdom. I, I, I think that, that this is a very receptive place to do business. It has all the issues of any bureaucracy that it's a little slow to deal with, but, but the mission of the people that I've talked to and their commitment to it is really, really inspiring and something that's exciting to think about being part of. Jamie Hayward, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.